on. These days, after we open up arteries, we put stents in. And these are the most two, two most popular stents at this time. These are what are called drug-eluting stents, which you've heard about in the news lately um, as having some problems. But in fact, these stents have revolutionized our practice in such that we rarely see what's called restenosis or reaccumulation of blockages these days. Now, why does this occur? Well, cardiac risk factors, the traditional cardiac risk factors include these five simple risk factors. Hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, smoking, and your genetics or family history of heart disease. Now that's not to say that someone without any of these problems can't develop heart disease or that someone with all of these problems is bound to have it, but the more of these risk factors you have, the more likely you are to develop a problem. Now this is another example of what hardening of the arteries can, can do. This is a picture of somebody's aorta on what's called a transesophageal echocardiogram. And you can see that the blood should flow in this black space and these are the walls of the aorta or artery. And this here is a blockage that's just free floating right there attached by a small stalk. Now if this were to break loose, it can travel through the aorta and block up whatever artery it happens to land in, causing a stroke kidney failure, or gangrene of a leg, or wherever it goes. It can wreak havoc. This is an aortic aneurysm. The aorta normally should be very small, like you saw in the previous picture. But in this one, it's bulging and enlarged. And you can see the blood flow is just swirling instead of going in a steady fashion through that vessel. That's because of this aneurysm. Now, if an aneurysm gets large enough, you can have what's called an aortic dissection where the artery actually tears and that can be a fatal problem. In this picture, this is the aorta again. The blood flow is over here and over here is the tear and there's just a blood clot forming in there blocking off that artery. Now, I want to get into diet and cholesterol briefly because I think I enjoy, as a cardiologist, preventing heart disease more than treating heart disease. And really, to a large extent, a lot of these problems are preventable. Of course, you're not going to eliminate heart disease through a, a proper diet, but you can really reduce the likelihood of developing a problem. So what causes high cholesterol or hyperlipidemia? Well, many factors do, but the foremost ones are listed on this slide, including obesity, diabetes, thyroid problems, and diet in general. Now, we all know that obesity has become a major epidemic in this country. So it's all the more important to know your cholesterol values and know where you are. And this is something your doctor can help you with. Normally, your cholesterol should be under 200, with the LDL or bad cholesterol ideally being under 130. Now, if you have heart disease or diabetes or strokes or peripheral vascular disease, you really want that LDL to be driven down below 100. The HDL is considered normal if it's above 35 for men and 40 for women. And then we worry about a cholesterol to HDL ratio. The, the HDL, by the way, is the good cholesterol, so the higher it is, the better off you are. And therefore, the lower this ratio is, the better off you are.